Welcome back. Cases of rape and sexual abuse in India have made headlines around the world. But what's the situation really like for women in India? And could the Western media's coverage be blowing the issue out of proportion? Joining me is feminist professor at the University of Maryland, Ashwini Tambe. Thanks for coming. Thank you. According to United Nations figures, one in three women in the world experience physical violence in their lifetime. Yet we often hear about physical violence against women only in the developing world, not in developing countries. Is it time for a global discussion on this? Oh, what a great question. Absolutely. I think it's a really good moment for us to be thinking about um, sexual violence and in particular about the term rape culture because we tend to think about rape as being localized in particular cultures of the world or regions of the world, but actually what a lot of us scholars are talking about is rape culture as it exists in various parts of the world, including the United States. So college campuses, for instance, right now are all a buzz about um, this problem and students are up in arms. So certainly the, the term rape culture has actually really taken off. So yes, I, I'm really grateful for the increased attention to this issue. If we look at what uh, is the reason behind some of this violence around the world, if we looked at uh, developing countries like India, we just talked with Leslie Udwin, who uh, was the producer and director mm -hmm. of that movie, India's mm -hmm. Daughter, she attributes it to a large extent to culture and, in fact, uh, goes to the extent of saying that the rape and killing of a young student was representative of most men in that country because they are programmed, as she puts it, in a certain way. Do you believe that to be the case? No, I do see things a little bit differently. Um, I mean, I tend to actually think we need to uh, ask questions about um, which men we're talking about and not assume that it's a problem that is um, you know, true of all men and across time and across the country. Um, it is true that I think this film focused a lot on men who are rural, I mean, who migrate from rural areas to cities in search of work, who are poor. Uh, and unfortunately, I think that has been the narrative about the problem in India. But if you look at uh, some of the research that has been published on the country, it's actually surprising. Uh, there are higher levels of se sexual violence reported in men uh, who are, um, you know, highly employed, you know, upper socioeconomic uh, status men. Um, now, I think the problem is also not one that is exclusive to men. Actually, I think people in general, women, mothers, mothers-in-law, do enforce certain ideas about what it means to be honorable, what it means to be respectable, notions of you know, how to conduct oneself in public that are actually a part of the problem. So I would also argue that we shouldn't be just be pointing fingers at men. Right, so the solution to the problem from what you're saying is, is going to be far more complicated uh, and far harder because we're not just talking about violence here and uh, let's say the implementation of certain laws, we're talking about changing cultural values here. Uh, yes, that's right. So if I understand your question correctly, you're saying that laws are not alone sufficient. Sufficient, yeah. Right, right, right. I think uh, what we're seeing is that people certainly are using sexual violence as an, a, a way of exercising power or an attempt to exercise power. Um, we are, um, you know, we're, we're in a situation right now where um, the problem is assumed to be one of, you know, strangers attacking women on streets when even the National uh, Crime Records Bureau points out that 94% of sexual violence cases happen um, uh, in, in contexts where the person is known, the offender is known, so it's a family member or a neighbor or a relative. So. Um, you know, the, the problem is certainly much more deep-rooted. The law tends to assume there's someone who is someone you could arrest and, you know, um, b bring to justice. But most people don't want to report their family members and neighbors. Right, because you have this other phenomenon, uh, and again, I have to refer to India, where marital rape is not a crime. Yes. Uh, and in fact, the number of women sexually assaulted by their husbands is 40 times higher than women who are assaulted by people whom they don't know. Yes, 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 exactly. Uh, so it is a serious problem, and in fact, that was one of the tragedies of the recent attempts to reform the law, that marital rape was not included uh, as, a, a, uh, as, as a crime in, in, in the overall framework. Now, the head of the uh, UN Agency for Gender Equality says that in many instances, there are laws that exist in many countries around the world to protect women from this kind of mm -hmm. violence, mm -hmm. but the problem is that these laws are not being implemented. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yes, it is true. I think laws are um, sometimes a very blunt instrument, not always effective. Uh, I think they function as a threat if they are widely known. Uh, uh, but I think uh, we are, w really we should be looking forward to resources being put into uh, uh, handling uh, this problem. So for, uh, for instance, in India, there was uh, a very interesting initiative to actually set up more rape crisis centers. Because in India, one of the interesting problems sad problems is that women who do experience violence don't have other places to go to. They can't return to their natal homes because they're often worried about the stigma. And so we so activists have always said that we need more crisis centers, more battered women's shelters. And so in the last two years, there's actually uh, money that was supposed to have been set aside for it. But just in the last three weeks, um, the government has actually stepped back from its commitments. So um, if we're talking not just about the law, but overall in terms of policies, uh, we do need to be doing much more to um, set aside resources right. for it. And to what extent would education play a role in this, especially sex yeah. education? And we know that in many countries in the developing world, sex education uh, is a taboo subject. Yes, certainly t sex education uh, needs to be done in a particular way that doesn't actually make the problem worse by reinforcing notions about the value of chastity and respectability. Um, education is one part of the picture. Uh, I think we need to think about what actually happens in the context of sexual violence. Uh, the people, who, I mean, women who, uh, who do suffer great levels of sexual violence but who don't often get um, a lot of attention as victims include um, women in the unorganized sector, you know, women who are cleaners, cooks, construction workers. And I think the people who exercise violence against them are not only people who are doing it because they don't have the education, it's because they actually see it as normal to um, uh, exercise that kind of, they don't even see it as violence. I think that is the problem. When I say rape culture, it's actually when we don't recognize sexual violence as violence. We think of it as fun or sport or legitimate punishment. Yeah. Dr. Ashwini Tambe, thanks for joining us. Thank you, you're welcome. We are going to take a break right now. Up next, we move from India to Mexico, where six women are killed every day. We take a look at that disturbing figure. That's all coming up on The Heat. Stay with us.